Hey here, this is Lord Potato, and this is, well, what if part two was the reincarnation of part Majin Ba, or, I mean, slash ma part Majin, okay? Uh, let me first say something before I continue this. Uh, this is part two, of course, yeah? But, let me say something. I'm not going to watch bar so instead I'm just going to watch an explainment of bar two, like on YouTube, because I'm not going through <clears throat> all the fillers. Because fuck that. <clears throat> and that's what I'm going to probably do for the other bar to what if. What, uh, bar to what if because, you know, I'm going to try to finish him. I don't give a fuck. I'm not. I, I, yeah. I tried to rewatch bar to. Not rewatch it. Mostly watch bar to. And I'm like, yeah, this motherfucker's stupid. But other than that, um, it's not stupid. I mean, it is, but we fucked it up. The fucking character. Not characters. The artist or whatever. Not the artist, the, the writer. I know that the writer is not the same person for, for Naruto, is it? Yeah, I don't give a fuck. But other than that, I'm just going to watch an explainment, which I'm already did. And I'm just going to go through Baruto like that, okay? Also, subscribe to Anime Sensei, Iconic Waters, Obito Waters, and yeah. Also, the links will be in the description. My second channel will also be there. But not the fucking point. Let me just continue on with this part and go. So, we go into the last part where I last us about. Left it off. I can't fucking speak right now for some reason. But let's go. So, we go into, well, Barto kind of walking with his family. His, well, family that he hasn't really seen in, what, well, one year. Of course, Hiyashi is trying to talk to Barto. While uh, Hinawari is actually talking to a boy named uh, Shinkai. Now Shinkai is this boy with dark blue hair and dark blue eyes. And of course, he's a Generation X. And if you don't know what the Generation X um, is, because uh, it's not in Baruto, okay? So let me explain. A Generation X is not from Baruto, it's from uh, God of High School. And it's basically a creation generation, well, created by Margin Park. Who, he wanted humans to be stronger than gods. So, of course, he kind of created these humans, these child humans, to be smarter than an average adult. To be stronger than an average adult. To be uh, more, uh, like, more, um, more, like, intelligent and kind of figuring out things really fast. Sorry, to say intelligence most of the time. But, of course... These kids are also really good at learning anything. They're like prodigies in their own, like, they're, like, any Generation X are just prodigies on their own rights. Because they will learn martial arts so damn fast. And even train in martial arts for only being, I don't know, four fucking years old. Yeah, when they, I think when they turn, like, four to five or six... They're already just able to talk, learn, and actually kill without mercy. Yeah. That's what Generation X is. Children that are besides beyond God level. And beyond the human well, expectation. But yeah. So, of course, the boy that is named Shinkai is right now next to him, Wari, and talking to her. This is where uh, he is a Generation X. Barto actually managed to transform his genes into a uh, Generation X. And this is where, well, Shinkai is, well, the same age as Hinawari. Hinawari is, well, 10 years, well, how much did I say? I think I said she was 11 or 10. Barto is right now being 12, but yeah. So, of course, yeah, um, not 12, 13, let me just say. So, Barto is 13. Hinawari is actually, uh, 11. Not 11, 10, yeah, you want to put it 10. I can't remember, but yeah. She's right now talking to, well, uh, Shinkai like it's nothing. This is where Shinkai is kind of talking to her and being really nice, but at the same time, doesn't know what to do. He's usually always with his, well, master and always helps him and, well, other things, but yeah. Shinkai and, well, Barto were the only people to actually, well, be alone on journey, kind of traveling everywhere. So, yeah, of course, this is where, well, Bartol is walking. 
of course, his movement speed is pretty fast, which he can pretty much walk pretty fast or can just walk slowly at the same pace as like his family. But also when he steps, there's no sound ever coming around, well, coming from him. He's right now just walking so softly into the ground that every like footstep he makes doesn't actually make the footstep sound. He just takes steps and steps. No sound coming from him. It's like he, uh, well, he is the perfect ninja. But of course, Naruto, he also has his wings. And of course, he has to kind of make his wings kind of curl up to him so it doesn't bump into his family. So yeah. Of course, one I should mention about Barto's eyes. So Barto's eyes are well these. So one is red and has that kind of golden cross, while the other one is just grayish. So yeah. Of course, he does have that giant X on his head, but yeah. Of course, where Barto he's walking with his family, and he actually does ask him if he already have well mastered the Alkagon. Naruto, well not Naruto, Barto says that this is not the Byakugan, it's just a side effect of becoming a god. This is where, well, when he actually looks at Barto's eyes closely, he can just see that Barto, one of his eyes are just grayish, while the other one is, well, a red eye with a golden cross. Which he actually says, what kind of eye is that? Barto explains what the eye allows him to do. It allows him to see way further than a normal Byakugan. It doesn't allow him to see chakra paths, uh, well, the chakra paths, like what's it called, the Byakugan does. But of course, it can also copy what well, Barto is able to copy any Taijutsu technique better than the actual user. So, yeah. Then the better, well, yeah, better than the actual user. So, of course, he actually actually want to test that later. But of course, this is where, well, Hinata is saying, so Barto, it seems that you've really grown into a young, uh, well, a young adult. This is what Barto, so, so, uh, Barto says, I'm still only 13 years old, but I'm sure my height might be taller than that for a 13-year-old boy, but I'm still 13. I should mention Barto's height. Barto is not like 4'9 or anything. He's actually pretty taller than that in original canon. He's actually, well, 5'7". For only being 13. This is where, well, uh, uh, Shinkai, he is actually, well, 4, uh, four 8. And of course, this is where Hinawari is somewhere, I think, 4, 8 also. But yeah. This is where, well, Hinami is saying, So, Bart, so, uh, what are those, what's it called? What is this red looking thing that's, well, these red three things are behind you. Bart says that they are basically wings. Just two demon wings and one angel wing, mostly. But yeah, this is where um, Hinaba, uh, yeah, uh, Hinabi says, Wait, wings like demon wings? You said demon wings and angel wings? That's interesting. This is where Bar just says, Pretty much, yeah. This is where she kind of grabs it and, of course, just pulls on it. And Barto kind of gets annoyed a little bit, which he just kind of like. Uses air just around him to push Hinabi away. This is where Hinabi widened her eyes. Barto says, I do not like you pulling on my wings like that. This is where, well, Hinabi says, you know, that was pretty, that was pretty rude to hurt your big sis like that. Barto looks at her and says, big sis, you're my aunt. You're not my sis. This is where Hinabi goes, uh, I'm so hurt, hurt so, I'm so hurt. This is where Barto kind of just keeps walking along with, well, Hiyashi and kind of ignores Hinabi's kind of cries. Hinabi can see that Barto is basically different from just, well, one year ago. Almost like one year ago, two years ago, but yeah. This is where, well, Barto, he is really not caring about anything that much. This is where, well, Hinabi, uh, Hinata says, come on, Hinabi, let's just go home, okay? It's where Hanabi says, fine, big sis, okay. This is where, well, Ambus are gonna, they're like, kind of like seeing Barto, but of course, when they try to get anywhere close, Barto just snaps his fingers, and this is where, well, something pierces through Ambus so fast that Ambus cannot react fast enough. 
when Ambu tried to block it with his like kunai, and the thing goes straight through his kunai and hits him right in the head. Of course, this is where the thing kind of lands behind Baruto and kind of disappears behind Baruto into nothing. This is where, well, that thing was basically the dagger or kind of like a dagger that can pierce through anything. And I mean anything. So, yeah. It's one of the god weapons that Baruto can actually use and for being the reincarnation of Majin Park. But, yeah. <laughs> Sorry about... I keep kind of having to kind of hiccup a little bit, but yeah. And burp at the same time, but uh, other than that, no. <sighs> so, let me go back into the water. Let me, yeah, okay. So, yeah, Barto is still walking with his family. And, of course, Shinkai is kind of getting nervous around Hinawari. The reason why is because Hinawari seems so nice and so friendly just around him. This is where he doesn't know what is happening and for being still a child. He, well, a child, but still being a more advanced than being a normal child, he kind of understands a little bit. She's just being really, really friendly because, well, she wants to know more about what her brother has done over two years. That's where Shinkai has explained a lot of things to what his sensei has done, what the great things he has done, what the most amazing things he has ever shown. But yeah, this is where Hinawari says, that's so cool. I knew it, my big brother was super cool. This is where Shinkai says, like, yeah, Sensei was pretty cool. This is where, well, uh, Hinawari says, why do you call him Sensei so much? This is where um, Shinkai kind of flustered up and says, oh, well, he was the one to kind of help me and bring me into the light while I was just born into the darkness, but he was really, really amazing. He, 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 um, well, He's just very amazing. Hmm. Shinkai just admires Barto so much. We go into a flashback of when Shinkai was kind of, well, still kind of a kid before meeting Barto. This is where uh, Shinkai was treated so bad, worse than Naruto and uh, what's called Kawaki's life. Because Shinkai's basically backstory is his mother died. And of course, his father was the one to kind of take care of him. Of course, this is where... Uh, he was kind of treated in the worst uh, type of way because his father had, well, like, like dirty blonde hair, uh, kind of black onyx eyes. This is where his father always had a very habit of drinking a lot. Of course, this is where, well, he always throws beers at, beer bottles at Shinkai. Shinkai was always really having so many bandages all around him. Even since he was a child, of course, he used to be really, really scrawny and really weak and couldn't really move that much until, well, his father keeps kind of pushing him more and more to the breaking point that he could have died when he was actually eight years old. Like, he doesn't know how he can even live that long without eating and all that. He, may, he might have, like, eaten a couple rats and all that just to try to survive, but when he was eight, he was kind of at the point of almost dying. His father was about to sell him to a uh, what's it called a car member, like a car member because yeah, Ishiki was there to kind of buy, uh, well Shinkai, until Barto come along and saw this. This is where Barto would disgust it. So of course Barto, who was kind of already in his kind of godly form because he was kind of mastering at the same time, um, kind of saw this and saw the boy kind of being really pale. Barto saw. Well, Ishiki being Jigen, and Barto just kicked him so hard that Jigen flew into so many trees. Jigen did not see that speed, and actually smashed into to so many trees, smashing into a mountainside. This is where the older man said, what the? Barto saw him, and Barto pulls out the spear and slices his head off. This is where Barto says, disgusting. It was about, well, it was five months of how Barto left the village. When it was kind of like, not five months, it was uh, seven months in before he met Shinkai. Of course, Shinkai was eight at that time. That's where Shinkai kind of passes out after seeing so much kind of action because he was so weak. And of course, it were, well, he was about to like die until Barta saw him about to die. And Barta used something. Used something that Majin Park kind of taught him. Recovery, uh, yeah, recoverment. Like something to heal the boy. Of course, 
he heals the boy, but of course, Majin Park does tell them how to turn, well, this kid, who is still pretty young, into a Generation X. Which Barta does, and does turn this boy into a Generation X. Which allows Barto, well, not allows Barto, well, allows Shinkai to become a Generation X. To be strong, smart, and smarter than the average kid, mostly. This is where, well, smarter than the average adult, I should say. So, yeah. So, of course, Shinkai managed to live and actually just train with Barto for kind of two years. This is where, well, yeah, for two, yeah, for two years. This is where, well, Barto would have been 13 after that two year time skip. And of course, yeah, he is 13 right now. But of course, Shinkai is 10. And of course, Shinkai is more buffer and does kind of wear a black tank top, black pants, uh, dark blue shoes. Well, mostly dark blue pants and uh, dark blue sandals. And of course, does wear a, well, black jacket. So yeah, well, dark blue black jacket mostly. So of course, this is where, well, he is kind of just uh, happy and all that memories, but yeah. Of course, this is where, well, uh, Henry says, oh, that's cool. This is where uh, Shinkai says, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, he's just very amazing. <laughs> this is where, well, they get to the Hyuga compound, and of course, this is where, well, he actually wanted to test out Barto's skills, so of course, he decided to fight against Barto. And this is where Hinabi says, no, 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 a father. I should be the one. Besides, you're too old and you can easily break one of your backbones. <laughs> this is where Hinabi says, fine, go ahead and fight against Barto. This is where Hinabi says, so Barto, if you lose to me, you're going to have to call me Big Sis. And Barto says, what happened if I win? This is where Hinabi says, but you can't. Even though you're 13 and you might be taller than the average kid, you won't be able to defeat me. Barto... He kind of just kind of walks straight towards Hanabi. Well, not even walks hen to Hanabi yet. That's where he actually says, begin. That's where Barto says, if I win, I don't get to tell you anything. I would just have to call you Auntie, uh, what's it called? Yeah, just Auntie. This is where Barto, he kind of puts his hands out. And this is where Hanabi, she activated the Bialkagon and has her uh, hands right now in Chakra, Kodo with Chakra. To knock out Barto's chakra points. And this is where Barto doesn't even move. He lets Hinabi hit him multiple times, taking out all the chakra points in Barto's body. This is where Hinabi says, I win. That's where Barto says, No, you didn't. That's where Hinabi was confused before Barto back kicking her into the wall, really fast into the fence wall, smashing her into a couple buildings. Barto says, Again. Barto kind of cracked his neck, and of course, Barto says, you might have thought you won, but of course, I faked out my chakra uh, signatures. You might have think you knocked them all out, but really, I was too fast and easy to dodge all of it. You only hit a, well, after image. You didn't hit the real thing. Barto, so fast, even though he looked like he stands still, Barto was actually to the side, but there was only an after image that Hanabi thought that that was actually the real Barto. And when she kind of went past what Barto after attacking him, she did not notice that Barto kind of went to the same spot after Hanabi had done attacking and kind of just back kicked her and didn't hold that kick. He held a lot of power, but of course didn't hold like much power. Like he still kind of hit her with full force, smashing her into a couple buildings. This is where well, Hanabi's kind of hurt. She thought that she was able to hit Barto, Barto's speed. It's just completely just off the charts. No one can right now kind of be able to go up to his level. And not even Bart, uh, not Barto, not even Naruto in his KCM. Reason why is because, well, if you think about this, if, if Park Majin is basically uh, just sharing his body with a god and having the power of a god by the actual, the actual god of like some creation, I was like, Naruto's KCM will be able to go against Barto because if you think about it Naruto kind of just got the KCM well not KCM he does have the KCM from Karama and Karama is kind of a creation of the Jubi but also uh Naruto has have the power of some of the Sage of Six Path and 
who else kind of created the well took out the Juby to make Karama and gave the power to well Naruto is the Sage of Six Path. The Sage of Six Path is not much of a god, but instead of a demigod, because if he's only half human from a Kaguya, and Kaguya is supposed to be some kind of goddess of like chakra, and she's like a full Uzusuki, but still won't be strong because there's also something called an Uzusuki god. Then there's that god. Kage might have been a demigod, and Hagoroma might have been like some kind of stronger than human, okay? Just a half human, half demigod, I guess. So, yeah, and since Naruto is somewhat of a descendant of the Usutsuki race, making him ugh, a bit of a small fraction of a demigod. So, of course, Naruto won't be able to fight against Baruto. Even if Baruto don't even try to get fighting against Naruto. Since Baruto is right now the reincarnation of well, Majin Park. And since Majin Park fused his body with a god. And well for right now in the webtoon. Majin Park is like fighting against three very powerful people. That can destroy the world pretty easily. Like Han who is basically the Jaden Emperor uh, kind of like. Not Jaden Emperor reincarnation, kind of like having the power of the Jaden Emperor, kind of having like the eye mostly, like the third eye, kind of the power. Um, of course, there's also uh, Mira. Yeah, I think her name was Mi Mira. Yeah, Mira, who has the well body of the Jade Emperor, and then there's Jim Morty, who is basically a god. Well, the son of Gaia. Who is basically Morty Jim is a god, and if you think of Wung, oh uh, well, Sun Wung Khan, who is basically basically Morty Jim, and Sun Wung Khan is kind of immortal in like seven different ways. I'm not gonna explain through it because I remember like half of it, but I don't remember all of it. But yeah, so yeah, I just want to explain that real fast because I know some people are gonna be like, wait, so. Can Naruto win against Baruto and when uh, Baruto is basically the reincarnation of Majin Park? Not really. I'm going to just say that because, shit, their power levels are different. And Majin Park versus, I guess, Naruto, they might not be able to fight. But if you're going to try to talk about Barjamo versus uh, Majin Park, I think Majin Park would still be able to defeat, well, Naruto and Barjamo. Because all the Majin Park just has to do is just dodge attacks by legit just flying up in the air and staying up in space. Letting, well, what's called Naruto, who's in barge mode and only has a limited of time, just to go up to fight against Majin Park that's in space and let him die there. Because uh, Majin Park can easily move through space while, well, Naruto's gonna have a very hard time, and Margin Park is a genius. So what he got, what he got to just do is just let Naruto die in space. Pretty much easy. This intelligence is pretty good. So yeah, but other than that, let me go back into what if I, I went on a huge ass tantrum there. Oh my god. Let me go back into what if. Sorry. But let me yeah. So of course this is what Barto says. Are you done with your attacks? Hinabi. This is where, well, Hinabi's knocked out. She ain't gonna wake up. This is where Hinata just was shocked. Of course, kind of went to go get Hinabi to see if she was her and all anyways. But of course, she doesn't have like much rubble on her, like much marks, like like anything stuck into her or any scratch and marks. Because Barto did kick her, but did added like a shield around her. So when she does hit the, well, wall and other things, she will still feel the pain. It's just no, no, like, stuff will be stuck inside her, like, uh, sticks into her arm or anything, like, rubber or anything. She won't be able to feel that. Like, those things will not go through her. Instead, she will feel the pain because that uh, barrier is supposed to make her feel the pain that all the barriers feeling through while well, hitting the wall. So, yeah, Barto still just made it like that. He just wanted to make Hinabi see that Barto is too damn strong. To even be taken lightly like that. He actually can see that Barto. He showed some mercy. And when uh, what's it called, uh, Hinata kind of got Hinabi. Uh, she can see that Hinabi isn't hurt. 
She's impressed with her son being able to do stuff like that. Very impressed. This is where, well, for her to say, so, are you next, grandfather? This is where Hiyashi say, maybe. I wouldn't say I will be next, because after seeing that fight, it hurt in my back. This is where Hiyashi says, yep, after seeing that, it hurt my back, but I'm going to go inside. You know, I'm going to go lay down. Fire to nod and say, okay, grandfather, good night then. This is where Hiyashi says, yeah, 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 good night. This is where Fire to, he decides to leave the compound and actually starts walking around. This is where, well... Shinkai and even uh, Hinawari weren't there to kind of see that fight. Instead, they were actually kind of running around the uh, Leaf Village, kind of like getting ice cream and other things, because Hinawari thinks of Shinkai as like a friend, a very good friend now. Because if Shinkai is basically someone that is with, was with her brother, she thinks that Shinkai could be a very good friend, which she just brings Shinkai to a bunch of places like ice cream shop, food places and other things. Of course Shinkai does meet Miski, uh Sadora and even Summary and even Shikadai and other people. Because uh Hinawari does introduce Shinkai towards everyone. Like everyone of like original canon of Baruto friends. But Baruto is not friends with any of them. Because Baruto did not even go to the academy. He just didn't give a fuck. But yeah. Which I mean yeah whatever. And pfft. I'm going to say that 12 year old you had to go to academy to become a ninja, but bleh, whatever. Of course, this is where Barto, he didn't go to that, uh, well, go into the academy, he didn't care. Of course, this is where Samari thinks that Shinkai is adorable because of his dark blue eyes and his dark blue hair. Of course, Shinkai does not like being called adorable that much because it kind of hurts his pride a little bit, but yeah. Of course, this is where, well... A bunch of people are kind of just amazed with Shinkai being someone to be trained under what Baruto. And this is where Sadora does kind of insult Baruto and in saying that, hmm, I didn't think that Mora would be able to uh, train a kid. This is where uh, Shinkai kind of got annoyed. The fact that Sadora is kind of insulting Baruto. This is where, well, Shinkai kind of got annoyed and was about to fight her until he was about to like. He disappeared from Hinawari's, like, um, kind of next to her and appeared right in front of, well, uh, Sadora about a puncher because Shinkai was pretty mad. But, of course, Shinkai's fist was coated into water. And when the punch was about to hit Sadora, Sadora barely noticed. She even had her kind of Sharingan activated just because to see if Shinkai would react. Of course, she didn't expect Shinkai to be faster than her, even if her Sharingan was barely able to pick it up. Like, not even close to even pick it up. Like, can I even pick up Shinkai's speed? When Shinkai was very close to hit uh, Sadora in the face, some hand grabbed Shinkai. Someone actually grabbed Shinkai's hand. And this is where Sadora saw the punch about her hit her. Of course, some water just, like, hit her in the face a little bit because of the splash in her face. But this is where, when she looks to the person who kind of grabbed Shinkai's hand, even Shinkai looks towards the person who grabbed his hand, it was none, none other than Baruto. Baruto says, Shinkai, what have I been telling you? Don't attack people. This is where, well, Shinkai says, but she insulted you with, some, uh, with Kong Sensei. This is where Baruto says, it's still not an excuse. Unless they attacked you first, or tried to attack Hinawari, you would have been able to defend yourself and crush your enemy. But <laughs> insulting that, I really don't care about people trying to insult me. I already know that they're prophetic, weaker than me, but <laughs> I don't really care. It's where Barto smiles at Shinkai. Shinkai then stands down and says, like, yes, Sensei. He kind of, uh, what's it called? Shinkai was next to Hinawari again. This is where Hinawari was shocked to see her brother. She did remember what's called Hinabi wanting to fight what's called her brother, but this is where, well, she, she thought that Barge would be too hurt to uh, even be outside the, well, outside the compound. This is where uh, Hinawari was about to say something. And this is where Baruto already kind of read her mind and says, Oh, Hinawari, uh, Hinawari's right now in the hospital, if that's what you want to know. This is where Hinawari says, Wait, 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 wait a minute. Hinawari's in the hospital? What did you do to her? Baruto says, Well, she did say that fight her with full power. So, of course, I kicked her through three buildings. Hmm. It seems to be normal. This is where Hinawari uh, was kind of Hinawari. Uh, Hina Hinawari says, uh, 
Brother, why? I swear, Bart is like, it seems like the right reason to do it. Eh, I don't know. I swear, well, uh, people are kind of confused. And this is where, so uh, not Sarah, uh, Samari says, wait, Hinabi Sensei is right now in the hospital? Wait, what did he do, Bart? I swear, Bart looks at Samari and kind of doesn't even know who Samari is. This is where Bart just says, do I know you? This is where Samari says, uh, well, no, not exactly. This is where Bart just says, exactly. I don't know who you are. I barely know any of you here, except for Shikadai, um, Shikadai, Inuichi, or not Inuichi, Inujin, and that's all. I guess Sadar counts, but that's all the people I know here. Other than that, I don't know any of you. That's where Miski was behind him and says, interesting. So you're Baruto Uzumaki. And that's where Baruto says, yes, and you just kind of attacked, or tried to attack, an actor image. This is where Miski did try to grab, well, Baruto, who says, ha, huh, an actor image, just to kind of see how Baruto's speed is, or how fast he will react. And this is where, when he does grab the after image Baruto, he falls down. This is where Miski was confused. Baruto was behind him. This is where Baruto says, you know, I could have easily kicked you in the head after, well, you trying to grab my after image. This is where Miski was shocked. He did not see Baruto's speed. This is where, well, Sadura is shocked. She cannot even track with Baruto's speed, even though she has, well, one Tomoe and the other eye is basically, both eyes have the one Tomoe. So yeah, she can't keep track with Barto's speed, showing that Barto's more superior than her. This is where, well, she kind of feels that in her Uchiha pride, kind of be a little bit weak than Barto, but this is where she says, Hey Baka, why are you kind of uh, here? Or why, where the hell have you been? Mostly she said. This is where Barto says, Baka, that Baka means stupid. Why the hell you call me Baka? When your eyes are so pathetic and can't keep up with my speed. This is where Sadori kind of felt the was called stabbed through her heart. Because she wasn't expecting Barto to insult her that bad. This is where Barto does not have any feelings to anyone and doesn't give a fuck. This is where, well, uh, Sadori said, <coughs> At least I have a dojutsu while you don't. Yeah, I know. Uh, Hinawari told me that you didn't have the Byakugan, you didn't activate it, but she was able to activate when she was young. Far to say, even though I don't have the Byakugan, doesn't mean I still can't kick your ass. This is where Barto's eye, his red eye kind of glue red, more crimson red. And this is where Barto says, yeah right, the Byakugan, I knew the Byakugan might be strong, but if I can send a grown ass woman through three buildings and that she was, well, from the Yuga compound, then I would just see how your fucking father can do when I throw him into multiple dimensions and kick his ass for being called the strongest Uchiha. This is where Sadura was kind of confused. She does know about her father, but she thinks that her father would be able to fight against Baruto. Baruto then says, <clears throat> Also, let's not mention that I fought against three Uzusukis that were basically Hmm, how should I say, the originals of basically the Sharingan? Because let me explain, the Sharingan is basically, well, Re was kind of founded by Hagoromo of Uzusuki. And the Sharingan is basically just a lower version, your 1 Tomoe, 2 Tomoe, 3 Tomoe, uh, MS, EMS, and then there's the Renegon, and Hagoromo had the Renegon. Now where do you think the Renegon come from? Oh yeah, the Reni Sharingan. Who else had the running Sharingan? Kage Utsutsuki, other Utsutsuki that come from, well, different planets. You realize that your one to more Sharingan has a very long list of where it actually came from, but your one to more Sharingan is basically the weakest level out of all of them. So let me explain to this, you bitch. You are basically more prophetic than anyone else on the Gotham list. Besides, I beat three Utsutsukis, they are shown to have golden renegons. Let's not forget about that. And well, well, mostly when they did activate into like the true form or whatever. And I beat the shit of them without using a dojutsu. Without using, well, let's see, 
like say jutsu. I didn't even use a jutsu. Those abilities I used were techniques. They weren't jutsu. Do you feel any chakra? No, because there were no chakra, you stupid bitch. This is where Sadra feels like she started crying because, well, Barto's so just, just insulting her and adding salt to what's it called wounds. This is where Chojo, oh yeah, yeah, Chojo was kind of, kind of trying to comfort uh, Sadra, even of the other girls, and kind of glare at Barto. Barto sent his own amount of bloodlust. This is where they all get scared. This is where Barto says, shut the fuck up. You think I care? This is where Shinkai did notice that. Uh, Barto might get a little bit hasty and get angry a little bit, but that's just because Barto is Barto. He might, uh, well, he's more angrier than original canon, but yeah. But of course, he's way stronger than original canon. Way, way stronger. But yeah. Of course, is where, well, that's his anger just comes from Margin Park, because Margin Park does get angry sometimes in the what's called webtoon, even in the anime, I think so. If I can remember right. So, yeah, this is where, well, Shikadai was like, damn, I'm going to stay over here and not say a word. Marta says, good choice, because I would have roast you way harder than her. This is where Shikadai says, yeah, I don't want to. This is where Inuichi says, well, yeah, not Inuichi, Inuichi says, you know, that was a little harsh, Barto. Barto looks straight at him. Shikadai kind of hits his head and says, you idiot, you weren't supposed to say anything. Barto says, oh, really, Inuji? Okay, let's say two things. You are from two very powerful, well, not I want to say families, mostly one family named the Yamanaka. And the Yamanaka is not from, well, any, they don't have any strong well, I would say dojusus, kekekenkais. The only thing they're good at is going into people's minds. I swear to God, if you went into my mind, I feel like I would have easily kicked you out of my mind. Because that's how weak you would be compared to anyone. And compared to me. Besides, you going up in, against a chinchuriki like Hinawari here, you probably would have died because of the nine tails that's inside of her. Hm. Let's, uh, let's say also that A, your art techniques are trash, they can easily get hit once and they explode. I mean, your father techniques might be good, but still, I don't care. Um, who, what else do we say? You might have that Tonto that's on your back, but you don't know how to use it, do you? That's where uh, Inu Jin is right now kind of crying because he's getting kind of roasted, like, badly. And this is where Bar just says, Oh, and let's not... Forget something. Ah uh, yes, the Yamanaka. The Yamanaka clan. What do else say? What do else kind of insult you with? Oh yeah. Do you know that, well, your family, the Yamanaka, um, might be able to communicate with people far away, but that's not to say the technology just, just hasn't, like, kicked the shit out of them with that. Um, hmm. What else to say? Uh, I'm really not that much thing to say, unless I would say that they're not originally, well, they're not really a descendant of Hagoromo. And, not to say Hagoromo's not a basically god, he's just a demigod. Hmm, pathetic to think. This is where Inuji just kind of cries, kind of cries next to Shikadai, and Shikadai is saying, Hey, wh what are you doing? Get the fuck away from me. I'm not trying to get, like, hated by Naruto, or not Naruto, Barto. This is where Barto looks at Shikadai and ignores him. That's where, uh, what's it called, uh, Iwa? Yeah, I yeah, Iwa? Or, what's it, Iwa? No, Iwa. He kind of looks at Barto, glares at him. This is where, well, the, uh, classic kid, I forgot his name, uh, wait. But, yeah, Iwa is kind of just looking at Barto with a glaring expression. Barto looks at him and ignores him. Completely looks the other way. Iwabi kind of gets annoyed. Has a tick mark. And was about to say something. Barto says, Hey, dark, uh, dark skin guy. If you want to say something, let's, let's just mention a couple more things. Uh, you're not from any special clan. That's one. You're not, you don't have any special kakakankai or dojutsu. That's two. Well, mostly three. Hmm. 
Also, for filling the what's called Academy so many times, because yes, I can read her head, and I can see that you're older than anyone here, shows you that you're pathetic as fuck. I wouldn't be talking, Mr. I feel the Academy more times than I can fucking count. This is where Iwari kind of goes behind, well, the glasses kid, and kind of starts crying behind. This is where Metal Lee is not going to say anything because he's nervous around Bart, so really nervous. His aura doesn't give, like, a good feeling. It does sometimes, but when Bart is really pissed, he just doesn't give a fuck. Uh, think about it if he just goes Black Force, uh, what's it called? Yeah. Black Air Force's energy. He just becomes a menace, straight up just a menace. To society. This is where... Well, part of six. Whatever. Let's go, Shinkai. This is where Shinkai says, uh, Where are we going to sleep? This is where part of six. Good point. Hmm. How about you go with Hinawari to what to call my old house? Why I go do something. This is where Shinkai says, Wait, something. This is where part of disappears. This is where part of the leap and note saying, Just do it. I go do something else. This is where Bart does, and kind of just sleeps like on top of the stone head. It doesn't really care. Any ombus that would get close to him just gets easily pierced through with a dagger, but that's all. This is where, well, there were so many bodies next to Bart when he was waking up. This is where he sees, well, Naruto. The dagger really never attacked Naruto because Bart can easily like sense Bart from a mile away, even in his sleep. This is where, well, uh, Naruto says, Barto, let's talk. Barto say, ah, did you say something? I, I didn't really uh, hear you. Did you say that you wanted to talk or fight me? This is where Naruto says, I said talk. This is where Barto says, no, thank you. This is where uh, Naruto tries to grab Barto from like the shoulder. And this is where Barto ducks down. Like upper knees, bar uh, well, not Barto, upper knees Naruto up like in the chin. Throws him up in the air. Barto appears right in the air. Kicks him multiple times in the air. And this is where Barto lands down and says, I'm not going to talk to someone like you. Fuck off. This is where Naruto falls down to the ground. This is where Naruto goes, uh, what's it called, KCM and rushes at Barto. Intending to punch Barto. Barto's easily dodging the attacks. This is where Barto, he kind of just... Uh, puts his, uh, what's it called? He tries to kick at well, Naruto, making sure that the uh, speed of the kick didn't hit Naruto. And of course, this is where uh, Naruto managed to dodge, but this is where Barto says, Axe kick. This is where he smashes his kick down to well, Barto's head, smashing him down to the stone Kage's head, breaking, well, the head of um, Harus and Saratobi. This is where, yeah, Barto is kind of sleeping on basically the third uh, Kage's head, but yeah. Barto smashes, well not Barto, I'm saying Naruto's head gets smashed to the head, breaking the third Hokage's head, and of course, the third Hokage's head does smash, well, the, uh, well, the Kage's building. So yeah, that's where multiple Ombus are rushing towards Barto, and Barto says, you guys are pathetic, to think you will be able to defeat me. This is where someone says, what's the wood binding? Barto sees the wood binding. And it doesn't even get close to him. Barto just appear right in front of uh, Yamato and punch him in the stomach. Right now, knocking Yamato out. Barto sees the other Ambus and says, uh, what's it called? Piercing, uh, pier the, the piercing dagger. That's where the dagger it spins. Well, really, well, it didn't spin really fast. Well, I might say it did spin. This is where Barto says, piercing dagger, spin, tornado. This is where the dagger spins so fast. Cutting all the Ambu's heads off so easily. Barto says, So, idiot. Are you going to come out of nowhere? Sasuke Uchiha. This is where Sasuke went in his eyes. This is where Sasuke thought he would be sneaky enough. Barto appears right next to him. This is where Barto uppercut his shit so hard up in the chin. And turned his ass straight to multiple buildings. Barto says, I'm not going to talk to two pathetic idiots that couldn't go even against the Usuzuki race. Barely even demigods. My fucking god. I have to be be surrounded by idiots. This is where, well, after that incident, we go into, well, about two hours later. This is where, well, Naruto's right now, like, banished up pretty much. And Sasuke is kind of like telling Naruto to stop being an idiot. 
because clearly clearly it shows to be Barto is clearly stronger than both Sasuke and Naruto and no one can go against him or go against Barto because Barto just doesn't give a fuck about anyone except for Shinkai and if almost dare touch Shinkai then not when Barto's going to go around the whole village to kill every Ambu. So yeah. This is where ninjas are kind of terrified of Barto. For Barto only being uh supposedly getting level. Well, supposedly being getting level is supposed to be getting level, but supposedly uh supposedly he's kicking the shit out of both the strongest people in the whole entire world. With ease. Yeah, Barto is not carrying that much. So, of course, this is where uh, Naruto does assign a mission to Team 7. Even Barto is on Team 7. Because Barto is put on with Sadara and Miski. And Sadara kind of glares at Barto. And Miski kind of just seems kind of dumbfounded with Barto's strength and his rudeness. This is where, well, he doesn't know if he wants to call Barto his son or not. So, well, Chojo's team is also on there, so Team uh, 10 will be also there. Or whatever rank, or whatever team name they were on. But yeah, this is where, well, they, they are having to deal with that one actress. Barto looks at the actress once and sees the other actor. And this is where Barto says, You realize that she's trying to kill you and this whole bullshit mission is just ridiculous. I don't give a fuck about it. So I'm out. This is where, well, the girl is widening her eyes. And this is where the actor also widened his eyes. This is where the girl's uh, plans were ruined. So, of course, tries to attack Barto in an instant. But this is where Barto appears, well, already grabbing the kunai so fast. And this is where Barto, like, had multiple hands because this is a technique. He says, a hunger hands. This is where so many hands grab the actress and rips her apart. This is where Barto says, pathetic. Give me a stronger mission, you pathetic idiot. You, this is where Naruto widened his eyes. Clearly, Barto doesn't give a fuck about Mercy. This is where, well, Team 7. Yeah, this is uh, kind of broken, but uh, Barto doesn't really need Team 7 on a goddamn mission. Barto can do any mission on his goddamn own, but yeah. This is where, well, we go into a couple of days later, uh, well, later, and missions with Team 7 has been going really smoothly, if you would like to say. Of course, mostly Bartle easily just defeats anyone. Anyone that pisses him off, he kills him in an instant. He just doesn't give a fuck. Naruto realized that Bartle is way out of too much control. So yeah, of course this is where Miski disappears, but before Miski was able to disappear with that one guy, Barto was actually kind of walking to trees. That's where that one guy says, uh, who had explosion K uh, clay through it at Barto and say, Kai? But this is where his head, the guys uh, who threw the clay attack, his head was rolling down, his body. Barto appears right next to Miski, and this is where Barto says, oh, hello there. Are you trying to leave Konaha? You know... It's a very, I would I would say that it's a crime against Konoha, but you know I don't really care. But it will hurt my sister's feelings, so I'm gonna knock you out, and take a mission to the Stone Village. This is where Miski says, "Wait, what do you mean?" He gets knocked out. Barto, he did kind of like get information from absorbing the guy's, well, mostly that one guy's body. Of course, the other guy with the stone weapons, uh, not stone weapons, metal weapons, tried to hit Barto. But of course, his head also flies off. To Barto, he disappears in just light and appears in stone with light. Barto was so fast that he travels, well, yeah, he travels faster than light. He he basically disappears and appears in the stone. He teleports mostly. Of course, Barto sees some stone creatures. Destroys them all in an instant. Sees the creation person, the scientist, that one dude, and the girl and the other guy with red hair. Barto cuts all their heads off and kind of walks away. Yeah, Barto just didn't give a fuck. Barto says that would be a problem later and I'm not going to deal with it later. Fuck that. Barto goes back to the village and yeah, that arc just 
gone. The arc just never happened. Barto didn't give a fuck. Of course, this is where, well, another uh, kind of mission appeared. And this is where Team 7 and Team, well, Summary has to go towards a village to find out some bullshit. Of course, Barto meets, meets us once, like, supposed to be person to kind of find out what's uh, the reason with animals or whatever. Like a doctor of animals. And Barto just doesn't give a fuck. He knows that this guy's a villain and Barto might get rid of him later. But this is where they go through the arc. Well, mostly the whole freaking arc goes the same. It's just Barto just doesn't help the ducks mostly. What he does, he gets rid of the curse mark. Of course, he meets Jigen. And, well, not Jigen. Jugo. And, of course, Barto helps Jugo get rid of his own curse mark. And also getting rid of, well, not his own curse mark. Getting rid of that one uh, killer side half. By just going into Jugo's head and destroying that one side. This is where Jugo is no more into murderous killer instant and does help the ducks so much easier and freely without going berserk. Of course, this is where those water ninjas were, uh, was trying to track uh, Jugo down, but of course they get obliterated when a dagger flies through the air in so fast speed, it sounds like a whistle kind of just flying through the air. This is where it hits him all and kills him, and Barta does kill that one dude who's trying to use the curse mark. Barta does fight against those two twins, easily ripping through them, but yeah. But of course, this is where, well, we go back to the Leaf Village, and Bartos, like, he does what's it called meat, well, well, not meat, mostly, uh, what's it called? Barta does meet that one girl who's basically Asuma's daughter, but really, he doesn't care and just walks past her. He just doesn't care. Of course, this is where, well, uh, Barta does go to that one village to meet, what's it called, that one girl. With Konohamaru because Konohamaru wanted to take Barto by himself to see how the boy will act by himself only. Of course, they what well, they were going on a mission. Of course, they did that mission really fast. It was just a C rank mission to get rid of some bandits. Of course, they come back. They meet a girl and Konohamaru does fall in love. Barto just says, "Then go fucking talk to her and piss off." This is where Konohamaru does bring Barto along. Then, and this is where well. Barto is driving along with this whole race in the memory bullshit, but Barto destroys the curse pretty damn easily, just wiping the uh, wiping the curse out of fucking thin air, and of course, whatever happens later, just whatever. That's why we just skip that arc because Barto just didn't give a fuck. He just destroys the curse, and anything uh, the same thing might have gone with Cannon, but yeah. But of course, it's well, well, uh. Uh, what's it called? We go into, well, another, well, not mission. Barto was going on a mission by himself instead. A B rank mission to see how fast he would do it. He did it in 30 seconds and appear right behind, uh, well, back in Konoha. That's where Barto does meet, what's it called? Uh, well, basically, Summary's team having a new teammate. Summary is actually going to be a tech ninja still, but yeah. Of course, Barto didn't really care about Summary because, well, he, he was never the one to actually meet her and doesn't really care about her. Of course, uh, what's called, not Naruto. Barto does meet the Samurai, the new replacement of Summary. And this is where, well, Barto just ignored her completely. But yeah, really didn't care. But yeah, of course, this is where, well, we go into, well... Uh, what's it called? Shikadai is still, well, yeah, Shikadai is still meeting those bandits. And, of course, it's where, well, everything would kind of go in the same way with Shikadai and, well, the bandits or whatever, that one bandit, the ice user. But, of course, this is where, well, Barto does meet the actual true leader of the bandits and rips his head off pretty easily. He doesn't care. So, yeah. Of course, this is where, well, um, I think I should just leave it off here. Yeah, I'm thinking I'm just leaving it off here, but yeah. This is, yeah, I'm going to leave it off here for part two. So, yeah. I'm getting tired and I'm wanting to go do something real fast. But, yeah, other than that, have a nice potato day. Potato night, potato seed, potato, potato. But, yeah, this is part two of this what if. But uh, other than that, have a nice, yeah, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Yeah, bye. Potato, potato, potato.